the Lord just seemed to um, give us a desire to go where the gospel hadn't yet been been preached. And uh, one thing and another led to uh, to Phil and Bruna de Leo uh, trekking seven days from Ninia. In early 1964, the children and I joined Phil here. In 1961, my dad Stan Dale and fellow missionary Bruno DeLeo trekked into the Heluk Valley located in the remote mountains of what was then Dutch New Guinea where they discovered the Yali tribe of that area. One year later, after the construction of a rough airstrip, my mother, siblings and I also went to live with the Yali. Phil would take time to uh, sit down and just try to put, put down and record conversations and put words down and and um, Phil had uh, enough of the language that he translated some Bible stories and he would go around to the different villages each Sunday morning. Dad spent much of his time trying to learn the native language and taking every opportunity to preach the gospel in nearby villages. After many years he eventually managed to complete a draft of Mark's Gospel into the Yali language. My mother was a nurse and a midwife and used her skills to bring medical help to the people. She had a particular burden for the women who had very difficult lives. When my dad first came into the Hellock Valley, he wrote the following in his journal. As I came down the range on the last day of my trek, the morning mist lifted and I could see the Hellock Valley spread out beneath me. A great longing came to me to hear songs of praise to God in that valley and to see groups of Christians in all its villages. And I stood there for a moment and in faith claimed the valley for Christ. When Phil and Stan left that last time, I just in retrospect, feel that the Lord was giving me some premonitions. Stan was shot first, and there were many arrows. They were, people were afraid that they couldn't kill Stan, so they shot about a hundred arrows in his body. And um, Phil looked back, and he said to them, as I've heard the story repeated, you've killed my older brother. And um, I've heard later too that he was praying and then they shot and killed him. It didn't seem to me when I left after Phil was killed that anything had been done. However, later I could put it into perspective and, and see that it was a beginning. It, it's just been so overwhelming emotionally just to hear the people express again and again their, their love for and remembrance of Phil and just seeing their enthusiasm for having the Word of God now in printed words and that they have a hunger for it. It was just overwhelming. It was hard to accept that Phil was really gone and that the Lord had allowed it. But the Lord just seemed to, to give me a peace that he would, would um, be there with me. And later he showed me that he promises to be a husband to the widow and a father to the fatherless. We got to see God's plan unfold as a primitive tribe came to understand the true meaning of love. Although my dad and Phil Masters died the most horrible deaths imaginable at the hands of cannibals, their lives were not wasted. 
In fact, they gave their lives in the greatest possible love for the ultimate good of many and proved that whatever God allows, He will use.